Hey there everybody, John Wagnon here with Def Central. And in this video, we're talking about the 2021 OWASP Top 10 list. And this is uh, security risk number three, which is injection. So injection slides down to the third position. Uh, in fact, since 2003, this is the first time on the list that it has not been number one. It's been number one forever, it seems like, right? Um, but you know, we have a lot more knowledge now about injection and how it works and how we can guard against it. Uh, and frankly, the other two, the number one and two risks that we've mentioned in previous videos are just more serious on average. And so anyway, injection is now number three, but it's still a very serious risk. I'll, I will mention too, a lot of times when people talk about injection, they talk about SQL injection, but injection is broader than that. It's not just SQL. It could be, you know, a variety of things uh, like LDAP, the lightweight directory access protocol. You can do injection attacks with that or the object graph navigation library, Ognol injection attacks. There's a, a whole variety, not just SQL. So anyway, also I'll mention that cross-site scripting has now been combined and is part of this category. So, uh, so you won't see cross-site scripting on the 2021 list by itself. It's part of the injection uh, risk. Okay, so I'm gonna just go through a couple of uh, points about injection. We'll draw a little diagram here. We'll talk about how you can, uh, you know, you know, guard yourself against injection attacks. So typically applications are vulnerable to injections um, when user supplied data is not validated or filtered or sanitized by the application. So just to give you a, a bit of a diagram here, uh, let's say you have, you know, users that are accessing your application, right? And you have user input. So let's say that there's some kind of, you know, input that the users have that the application reads and then takes action on, right? Well, when that user supplied data is not validated or filtered or sanitized by the application, you're opening yourself up to uh, the possibility of an injection attack, right? Um, if you have dynamic queries or non-parameterized calls that don't have context aware escaping, um, or, or, and, and those are used directly in the interpreter that is here in the application, you could be vulnerable to an attack. Uh, or like when, when hostile data is directly used. Um, so like the, the SQL commands, if, you use, if you're talking about SQL injection, um, if they contain the structure and malicious data in these dynamic queries um, or commands or stored procedures, those kinds of things, then, then you could uh, be susceptible to these you know, injection attacks. So to give you maybe a, just a quick scenario, and I'll use a SQL injection attack for this scenario, but again, you could, you could have injection attacks with more than just SQL, right? All right, so let's say that an application is built here. It's an awesome application, and it uses untrusted data in the, in the construction of a SQL call because it has a database. So let's, uh, let's just put a little you know, database back here. So this is the awesome database that holds all kinds of good information that this application you know, uh, interacts with and interfaces with. And so what ends up happening is when a user supplies, uh, uh, you know, this input or this data into the application, um, and in this case, I'll just use the example of, a, uh, of just a URL, right? So let's say that in this URL, um, you have, you know, it's uh, HTTP, right? Um, example, example.com, and then you have, you know, slash app, right and then slash um, account all right because we're getting into different uh, account sorry that's account right there um, and then let's say account view actually account view and then there's a little um, query right there the, the question mark and then I'm going to kind of swing around here and then let's say that that's uh, that, that query is ID um, equals you know, and then the, the, the user could change what that ID equals, right? So this is just, let's say that that's the example of the URL that the user would type into their browser and then that URL, you know, accesses this application, which would then in turn create a SQL query back to this backend database, all right? So whenever this URL is, uh, is accessed, then on the backend, kind of under the hood, if you will, what is happening is there's a SQL um, you know, uh, statement that's being that's being created that is uh, that's happening. And so, let's say that that SQL statement is uh, something like this. Let's say it's uh, select select um, star from. Let's write all this out here from accounts, right? From accounts where where 
uh, customer customer ID um, equals, and then it's going to have this, and then it's going to call whatever this ID value is right here. It's going to put it in here, right? So let's say that it's like a little uh, quote and then a double, and then there's a plus sign. This is just kind of the syntax of what that would be. And then it's going to have, you know, request. Uh, it's going to basically have the uh, the parameter. It's, this is not exactly the, the perfect syntax, but let's say it's, you know, get parameter, um, I, you know, it's like quote ID, right? And then it has some final, you know, uh, quotations and uh, semicolons and all that kind of stuff. But the whole point of this whole thing is that this right here, um, there's going to be a plus right there as well, but this whole part right here is calling the ID value from the URL and it's, and it's putting it into this entire SQL statement, right? And so, um, so effectively what could happen if you just put in ID, you know, one, two, three, four, then the SQL statement, will, it will run and it will, you know, interact with the database and then it'll get parameter ID one, two, three, four, and it'll say, hey, I need to have all the accounts where that customer ID is and it'll, you know, respond with all the account data, right? Okay, well, what happens is, or what could happen is an attacker, instead of putting ID equals one, two, three, four, they could say ID equals, you know, some crazy syntax, and this is the kind of the common one. It's like the quote, and then you could say or, um, or one equals uh, one, and then that could be just, you know, that portion right there is the ID. So then what's gonna happen, and this is, this is the nature of the injection attack, is that customer ID number is injected into this part of the SQL statement. So then what that ends up being is all of this is still the same, but now, you know, customer ID, I'll just kind of put it right down here. So all this stays the same, but then you get all the way to, you know, dot, 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 customer, customer ID equals, and instead of, you know, the actual value, it's going to be this single quote, and then all of this is going to be replaced with that. So now it's now it becomes a double quote, and it's going to say or uh, quote one equals one, and then this uh, this final little hash will be right there. All right, so it's going to be that right there, and then that little semicolon. All right, well this right here, if it says it doesn't even matter what this part of the SQL statement is, the fact that one equals one is true. So this is going to return a true statement. So this is going to be true, um, and then that's then then that means that it's going to just select everything from all the accounts, you know. So it just dumps all the account data. Okay, so that's a that's a dangerous thing, obviously, right? So that's but that's the nature of the injection is that when an attacker injects something into user input, you know, user uh, provided data, and the application does not validate it, it does not sanitize it, and it just sends it right back so that the in this case, the SQL database, or the database runs a SQL uh, command um, using that user supplied input, then you could run into a lot of problems here. So, uh, so that's the nature of an injection attack. The LDAP injection runs basically the exact same way, but instead of inter interacting with a backend database that runs SQL, you're interacting with an LDAP server now. So you just supply some LDAP syntax commands, but you're injecting those into what would be an LDAP query and then you get all this, you know, customer, or you get all these, you know, files or, you know, printer structures or, you know, all kinds of stuff that LDAP would have. So the, the idea of the injection on LDAP or the Ognol or those kinds of things is really the exact same, but this is just a good idea, an example of how it attack or how it, how it works, right? Okay, so a few things really quick to wrap this up um, on preventing injection. Um, it really requires keeping the data separate from the commands and the query. So um, in, in the context of an API, which we didn't really talk about API specifically, but in the context um, of API is you need to use a safe API, which avoids using the interpreter entirely if possible, um, or provides a parameterized interface if possible, or uh, possibly migrate over to like an object relational mapping tool, like an ORM tool. Um, another thing you can do, uh, not necessarily on API, but now just in general, is use positive server-side input validation. So we talked about input validation. Also parameterize your queries whenever you can, right? Um, you could also use, uh, use a spe uh, special 
um, escape characters. So like escape, or, I'm sorry, escape the special characters is what I meant to say. So if you have any kind of a special characters, escape those using the specific escape syntax for that particular interpreter. Um, another thing you could do specific to SQL, so back to this really quick, is use things like the like limit or other uh, you know SQL controls within the query. So again, if you go back to this thing, if the query itself was built in such a way that you had, and I'll just put the word limit right here. So if you had you know the the limit command built into this thing, um, you know you obviously you need to build it with the proper syntax and all that. But if the limit command was built into this, then even if the injection attack did happen and the attacker gets, you know, is successful here, the fact that the limit command is part of this, it limits the exposure. It limits all of the, all of the accounts that are going to be dumped. It's not going to dump the entire database, basically. It's just going to dump, it's, it's going to limit what is dumped out at, all at once, right? So those are just some ways to kind of limit your exposure, right? Um, so those are a few ideas in terms of, you know, keeping yourself safe from injection, uh, just some good best practices and things to, to keep in mind. So, hey, injection is still a dangerous thing, even though it moved down to number three, it's still, you know, it's still a dangerous uh, security risk out there. Uh, so stay safe out there, and thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.